Recently, Adobe added some really powerful AI masking tools to Lightroom and to Camera Raw. Quite often though, those masks are not quite what you want. Don't you wish you could just refine them a little bit? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make those masks much better. All right, so here's a great example that should illustrate this because look at all the details here in the leaves, in the trees. It's a little bit extreme, so this is not so much about the final result that I'm getting as it is to show you nice and clearly how to work with these masks on an image like this. Now, we're working in Lightroom Classic. However, if you're in Photoshop, we can also do exactly the same thing in Camera Raw. You're just gonna choose Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then you'll see that the settings here, the basic settings and the masking settings here are identical in Camera Raw as they are in Lightroom. So let's continue in Lightroom Classic. All right, we want to go to the Develop module. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use an AI sky selection tool. So let's go to the Adjustment panel and we'll see the masks and we click on Masks and we can choose a Select Sky. Now notice that it automatically selects the sky, but you can see lots of areas here of red, the areas that are being missed in the building, different things like that. So what we're going to do though, is we're going to inverse this mask. Now we could do this just using the apostrophe key, or we could tap and choose invert mask one. Great. So now we're looking at this mask we can see in the sky. It's doing pretty good, but see these areas of red. We don't want those areas selected because those are also going to be affected when we make the adjustment. All right, so what we want to do is we want to open up this foreground. So let's just grab the exposure and we're going to increase the exposure a little bit. And we can see it's starting to look a little better. And let's take our shadows and we're going to open up those shadows. There we go. All right, so let's go just a little bit more. So one of the things you might notice is we're starting to get a little bit of a halo around some of these edges. It's looking pretty good. But that halo is definitely a giveaway. So what we want to do is we're going to intersect with this. So we're going to choose the little dots and then we're going to intersect the mask. And that means only the areas where they overlap will show. And then we're going to choose a luminance range. Now the luminance range is not going to do anything until we touch it. Once we touch it, it will populate and we can show a luminance mask, meaning nothing's being affected right now. If I take the left hand side, notice that that will remove the shadows from that adjustment. If I go to the right hand side, it's going to remove the highlights. Now, the thing is, see all these areas up here? Those are not going to show in the adjustment. Let me turn the luminance mask off and you'll see that. Now, let me just adjust it so you can see. See how those are not being affected? And that's because only the area that overlaps is being affected because of the intersect. So what we want to do is just get into these edges. So let's show this luminance map one more time and let's pull it down and see how we get in there and we can get in very, very tight. Now this is probably going to show a halo. Let me turn that map off and see how well, those edges don't look too good right now, do they? They look almost illustrative. So what we can do is we can take this refine tool and we can pull this back a little bit. And now what we're going to do is just find a nice balance. Let's take this back a little bit. We don't want the halo but we don't want those dark outlines either. Okay, so let's see what this range mask is doing. Let's hide the range mask, see the halo around those trees and around those areas, turn it back on, and it does a nice job of reducing those. So all you've got to really do is just go in here and just find a nice balance between, you know, the, the results. All right, so we've got a little bit of kind of cleaning up to do in this area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna choose add. And then with the add, we're going to choose the brush. Now with this brush, we can paint in these areas and see what we're doing now is we're just adding that to the selection there. And that's going to fit in. So we're not going to get those weird halos around the building. If you wanted to take it away, you could use the minus key or the minus version of that is actually if you just hold down the alt or the option key. All right. So why does that work? Well, notice we've got auto mask turned on. If we don't have auto mask turned on, we're going to get these edges. See those halos? But if we turn the auto mask on and we paint there, it's going to restrain it or restrict it within those areas. And we're going to get a better result. All right. So what we could do in this point here is now that we've done this, we're almost there, but we're not quite. Let me just dock this mask. 
let's go down. So what I want to do now is if you look here, you'll see these are the effect adjustments. And you can see we've gone quite strong with them. Let me pull these down just a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to go to the main adjustments, which are underneath. And let's pump up the exposure just a little bit there. And then we're going to take the highlights back in the sky. And now that we've done that and we've brightened it up, we can actually roll back a little bit on the exposure in the foreground, maybe a little bit on the shadows there. And now they start to blend in a lot better. So if we look at this, here's our image before. And here's our image after. So drop a comment and let me know if you learned anything new and if this tutorial was useful for you. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. That's the like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.